Welcome everybody. I just wanted to show you a, a redo of this 24 by 24 Cape style garage uh, to answer a few things that questions that, that have come up. Uh, so I'll just kind of do a, a, a blow by blow, so to speak, of, of what we're doing. This of course is rebar, half inch, and it's spaced two feet apart, going both directions. And then we double it around the perimeter as well as we thicken the perimeter for concrete. The concrete we're pouring is 3000 PSI. It's about 12 yards. It's interesting, quite often you'll see uh, five or six guys pouring a slab. But when you have a good operator putting the, the concrete out, you almost don't have to do anything. Now it's the start of a 24 by 24 cape. Walls first. And again, the walls, we number them. That wall was wall section one, 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 two, and so on, all the way around. That way we can know, we know um, when we leave the shop, exactly where each wall section goes. You can see that area around the, the door to the house. We'll be um, cutting that out later. We wanted to close everything in and get it weatherproof. So we're ready to start doing wall sheathing. Always use the level. I guess we're set. We did snap a line. We're going to go to the line. Up a little. Yep, down, down. Yeah. Oh. Usually uh, we nail it flush with this. Then we snap the line and we nail to the line. That way we know it's square. And if the slab is uh, level, this will be level. But we always just kind of double check. Perfect. Did I say perfect? The P word. Seven sixteenths OSB on all the walls. We put a house wrap over that. We also put sill seal at the bottom on all the bottom plates between the concrete and the bottom plate. And the bottom plate is pressure treated. Floor joist time. We're going to set all the floor joists. Put plywood on. These are 14 inch high eye joists, the three and a half inch top and bottom. Uh, they're rated for 40 pounds per square foot live load. We're going to run up a few sheets of plywood so we have something to stand on. Just trying to be comfortable. Rim board, here we go. Now we'll straighten up that wall a little bit. We haven't braced anything, so we'll get that straight. Then we'll snap a line and away we go with plywood. If 
5 8 CDX plywood on the floor. Use um, 2 inch ring shank nails, galvanized. The wood eye joists are spaced 16 inches apart. They're lining up really well. So we're laying out this gable end. We're going to do both of them actually. We're going to uh, sheath it. That bottom plate we nail right to the floor at, a, at an angle so it's like a piano hinge when we tip it up so the wall won't just fall off over, over the edge of the, of the building. The roof pitch is a 45 degree angle. So we got the view to come out a little bit. If it was a really sunny day, it'd be uh, pretty spectacular, the mountains over there. Right now we're going to do the OSB, so we'll snap some lines, put those on, and then uh, cut that out. Then we can build the other gable end. And, um, we're actually going to put windows in and we're going to clapboard it and put the rakes, fascia, soffit, everything will be done when we tip it up. Staining the clapboards both sides. It helps a lot with warping and it seals it up really well. Exciting. This is going to be a big wall. They're tipping up. Hopefully it doesn't tip over.
Yoshina. Oh, that's not even heavy. I, I thought it was heavy. Make sure it doesn't slip because we're talking about getting crushed at that you point. Nails. Okay, a little higher. It's Tony. So nobody got hurt putting the first one up. Let's see. Let's try for two. Are we ready? This one's a little lower to the ground than the other side. Get that on that. Okay. This one we have to lift higher. I know. Ready? Yeah, <gasps> far <Yeah>, heavier. <laughs> Joel's got most of it on my side. Lauren, don't push so hard. seems like a good time to point something out. The rafters that we put up, we put a gusset, a double gusset on the top. Later on, we'll put a collar tie across at ceiling height to tie that in. There'll be a knee wall on both sides to support that. Uh, a lot of people like to use a ridge pole. My preference is to do it this way. It's a lot easier just to tip them up rather than working off of ladders and potentially falling, getting hurt. It's the same principle as a truss. So it really, uh, it's quite strong when the whole thing is put together. Right now, I don't know if you notice it. There's quite a bit of movement, but once you, once you get the knee walls on, the collar ties across, it, it's super strong, just like a truss. It goes together just like an erector set, basically. We pre-cut all of those at the at the shop. We're using 5 8 um, OSB for the roof. We put the roof wrap on as we went up. It was a lot easier to just reach out over and put that on. Building the knee wall. Answering the phone. <laughs>
headed up to do closing the, the roof now on this side we'll do the valley <clears throat> fit the mudroom over onto there uh, it's so hot today it's almost uh it's really warmed up a lot maybe 20 or 30 degrees warmer than it was yesterday loving it a lot of fitting here we've got to run some rafters up this way we're going to sheathe this side first we'll, we'll come up just a little way so we can work from the upstairs it's a lot easier than going outside up and down up and down we can work right here See, we tied in the valley there. Those sheets of metal are about 18 feet long. Really gets rid of that snow load so you don't have to worry about it. I can go check it inside. Perfect. Got a beautiful sunny day. We're going to be doing siding. I've been doing trim around the doors. Chad's closing up some stuff over in the corner, kind of a mess. He's cleaning that up. We're ready to do uh, corner boards and siding. Uh, it's supposed to be um, close to 12 inches of snow in the next day or so. So we're trying to get a lot of this done before that happens.
The clapboards are ha what they call half by six spruce. They're stained both sides. We had clapboarded that gable end uh, when it was laying down and we calculated so that when we come up from the bottom it would come out exactly for four inches for a four inch reveal. Next is the 16 feet wide by 7 feet high garage door. A little bit of snow. All right, garage door installation. We have the tracks up. We haven't secured them on the ends. We'll do that in a little bit. Uh, had a little trouble recording from the outside. So we moved inside. We've got the first panel up and um, we'll just keep going. So we put tension on the uh, torsion springs. Seven and a half winds. My arms start getting tired. We're ready to try this, see if it goes up. Go ahead, Chad, you get the honors. Woohoo! It goes up. Hey, how you doing? So it's uh, ridge cap time. Whew. A lot of ups and downs in this business. Let's see how that looks. I love that new ladder hook. Oh, a little lightning. Oh. The ladder hook goes all the way over and it clears so that the ridge vent, ridge cap will go over that. Here we are. So we are done. We've cleaned up pretty well. Um, let me give you a, a little tour around. See what it looks like. See, we've got the side all done. Again, it's 24 by 24 with eight foot one and a half ceiling. We, it was kind of an innovative idea that we came up with to put these stairs on a platform landing. That way they have storage underneath. Uh, so they didn't lose any space. They actually gained storage space. So that's pretty cool. I'll take a quick walk upstairs. See if I can get. Here we are, we're all finished upstairs. This room, the, the garage is 24 by 24, it's a two car. 
The finished walking area up here is uh, 16 feet wide, 24 feet deep. But you get all the, uh, the storage up under the knee walls, both sides. So it's nice for boxes and so on. Got a, uh, it's an eight foot ceiling. Have the stairwell in. One of the most satisfying parts is sweeping the floor and moving out because it means the homeowner finally gets to use their, their new space. <laughs>